every fucking time. <laughs> I've got to be honest, um, I'm from Gloucester, and I thought we were weird. Um, <laughs> this is, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know if I've just stumbled into a game of age top trumps. Is that what? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you two, you came in quite early and you were sat over there, weren't you? And then you moved over here, and that was nice. And then we've got, you sort of, oh God, don't worry, you'll be fine. You you just came and headlined for this table down the front of you, and that was great. And, and then we've got a man here who's got a chopper on his T-shirt. Um, for those of you who don't know, that was a rally bike from the 1970s. And then we've got a man born in 1959, and whose parents did yeah, you, Alvin? <laughs> and I was just thinking, 1959 and the name Alvin. Something not quite right now, isn't it? <laughs> Clearly your dad wasn't from Whitney, probably an American Air Force just shagging your mum on a one night stand quite possibly. And you, Alvin, and your mate there, Alvin, no, shut up, no, Alvin, you and your mate there, you came in, Alvin, just fucking shut up now, Alvin. You and your mate, you and your mate came in, and you were stood up there having a look round. All cool, two cool dudes just having a look round. And then you made a beeline for the biggest table of ladies here. And I need to tell you something, right? 63. No fucking chance, right? It's game over now. Right? <laughs> and seeing as we are doing top trumps, I was 64 on Sunday. Yeah. It's all downhill from now on. I'll come back on that. You'll come back on that, you fucking won't. Um, <laughs> so when I looked at this gig, it said stand up for Whitney, and I thought, is that a comedy gig or is it just that a petition for a chubby Stenders character? I wasn't. Because you're, I mean, Whitney, I don't know too much about Whitney, but I thought we'd do a little quiz. Only a little one, right? And it's just true or false, right? So you can just shout out true or false. Whitney is renowned, world famous manufacturer of blankets. True or false? Yeah. Fantastic. When the blanket making started to go into decline, Blanket makers started making mops, and there was a certain period when on every single ship in the Royal Navy fleet there was a Whitney mop. True or false? false. It's true. It's true. One, well, yeah, that's true, see? This is educational, as well as being a um, comedy gig. And finally, your biggest manufacturer of blankets, Early's, closed on a Wednesday in 2002. And since then, Every Wednesday in Whitney is known as earliest closing day. True or false? Absolutely false. I think you may have heard it. <laughs> so Nick, tell us something about yourself. Well, I will. Thanks for asking. Um, we did. Uh, I did dry January this year. Uh, we still drank. Uh, just no sex. It was. <laughs> it, it was all drink related. Christmas Day, four o'clock. I had one red wine too many. Fell asleep at the dinner table. My wife said she was embarrassed, humiliated. All the other people in the hotel dining room thought it was hilarious. Um, she's, she's not a happy woman, I've got to be honest, it was her birthday. Um, oh, today. Uh, <laughs> got her a spa day, that wasn't right. She fucking hates grocery shopping. Um, <laughs> I went to the Leicester Comedy Festival, um, a bit like Eric, the headline act went in, in February, and I won the Silver Stand Up Award. Yeah. It sounds more glamorous than what it actually is. Basically, it's a competition. To qualify, you've got to be aged over 55. Pretty simple. No upper age limit. But backstage, it was like God's waiting room for comedians. <laughs> One act, he was in a chair, eyes closed, and we'd look at him thinking, shit, is he asleep or dead? And somebody said, should we wake him? And such was the camaraderie backstage. Another app said, no, fuck it, it'll increase our chances. Um, <laughs> and I went on and I got to the final and I did the five minutes and I won. And I phoned my wife, I said, you'll never believe it after four years of trying. I finally won. And she said, oh, that's fantastic. What have you won? Like, now you will have worked out from that accent that I am in fact married to a lady who hails from Bangladesh. Uh, <laughs> so I said, I won a trophy. She said, anything else? No? Alright. 
two hours later, I'm back home in the lane, showing her the trophy. She said, very nice. Anything else? No. Mm -hmm. I have been on the website, Googled it. Right? When were you going to tell me about that £500 cash prize? I was gutted, right? I had that earmark for a special occasion. She said, the thing is, you should always tell the truth. That's fine in theory. Right? Last Saturday, we were out in town. She said, see that woman over there? Yeah. Do I look younger than her? <laughs> yeah, of course you do. She said, you fucking liar, I don't. We had a massive argument. She went away on a cruise in April. She said, before I go, I'm only going to tell you three things. Or something like that. She said, Right, Wednesday I'm going to phone you, make sure you're in. Saturday, change the jewellery. And finally, don't let the dog upstairs. She did phone on the Wednesday. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Are you missing me? I told her the truth. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> she started clutching her straws. I bet the dog's missing me. He fucking wasn't. Me and him, we had a fantastic time. <laughs> we were down the pub, I was feeding from the table, we had tattoos done, well I did. And it, it was just brilliant. And, and, and he can't talk, he can't talk. But the, he looked at me the one day, and I knew exactly what he was saying. He was like, oh my dad, this is fantastic, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Has she really got to come back? I said, yeah, unfortunately she has. But it got to the Saturday and I was dreading it because I've never changed a duvet in my life. Um, and it's a king size duvet. And it's all right for you people who are probably normal stature, but I've got little arms. I was really struggling to get down the end, you know, to smooth it all out. 45 minutes I was wrestling with this fucking duvet. Got all the lumps sorted out, done all the buttons up and then realized there was two holes left and not enough buttons, so undone them all again. <laughs> She came home in the early hours of Sunday morning to find me asleep in the cover with the dog. Because um, he's, he's not been allowed upstairs since he was a pup. Because one, for hygiene reasons, but two, I've got to be honest, when we sort of start to get down to it being intimate, it does spoil the mood when you've got razor sharp puppy teeth biting your ass. So. <laughs> and the other night, I must have left the stair gate open. Because again, we were getting down to it in our favourite position. And I just looked round and he just sat there watching me. And as I said, he can't speak. But I knew what that look on his face was saying. Okay. And you have the audacity to tell me off for humping the cushion downstairs. <laughs> and you're doing that. You disgust me. <laughs> We celebrated Valentine's Day, did the romantic thing, phone the forest. Like to order some flowers. Would you like a card? Yeah. What do you want on the card? I'll just put to Lynn Love Nick. Would you like a kiss on the bottom? I said that'll be fantastic. Um, <laughs> she said, no, I meant on the bottom of the card. I said, I know. I'm a comedian, I was just making a joke. And quick as a flash, she said, I bet you don't get many gigs. Um, <laughs> which I thought was a bit harsh. But we sat down and had a meal at home, me and my wife of 22 years. Uh, I'm not, by that, I don't mean I'm married to a 22-year-old. That would be fucking heaven, to be honest. Um, we said, can you remember how we first met? Mm. Not really. We said, well, you had an advert in the Lonely Hearts column. In fact, you had two, but I only replied to one. Why was that? So in the first one, you put your height. Right? I didn't I didn't know she was hiding. I should have realised, because about two weeks after we got together, I suggested a day trip to Alton Towers. She said, I am not spending £62 for you to go on three rides. <laughs> Harsh, isn't it? When we were married, I came home, you were sitting down, said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, what is it? She said, how would you feel? about only being nine inches taller than the largest emperor penguin ever recorded. <laughs> um, she fucking Googled it. She was working in a school at the time and I used to drop in for coffee now and again. And I went in there this one time, went into the common room, she wasn't there. And one of the teachers said, do you want a coffee, Nick? I said, yeah, that'd be great. Do you want a biscuit? I said, that'd be lovely. <laughs> Why don't you papa pick up a penguin? <laughs> But we've gone, we gone through the same routine for the past 22 years. She goes up to bed, I come up to bed. Have you turned the TV off? Yes. At the wall? Yes. Have you locked the back door? Yes. Have you locked the front door? Yes. At the bottom? Yes. At the top? No. 
and it gets to about October, and it's, I hate this time of year. Do you? What's that? Well, the bottom of the bed's always cold, isn't it? I don't know, my legs have never been down that <laughs> to be quite honest. But she said, there's no romance in our relationship anymore. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, maybe when we're being intimate, it'd be nice to have some music playing, just to break the silence. The first problem I had was finding a track that only lasted 45.2 seconds. <laughs> but I did, Angels, Robbie Williams, put that on, got us in the mood, neither here nor there. She wasn't happy with my song choice number two, theme from Mash of the Day. Um, <laughs> she said, I think we need to spice up our relationship. I said, well, by what? She said, well, maybe, why don't we watch something sexy on TV? So about four weeks ago, we watched something on Channel 5, and I don't know if anybody saw it, The Great British Sexual Experiment. If you didn't see it, it was basically about these 30-somethings, perfect, perfect hair, perfect face, perfect teeth, perfect bodies, and they want to improve their sex life. And in the thing we watched, there was a guy and his girlfriend, he wanted a threesome. And the wife, girlfriend, she was up for it, she said, the only thing is, it needs to be somebody of a comparable age. And we were sat watching it, and then said, we could give that a go. I said, yeah, we could. She said, but it'll have to be somebody of a comparable age. I said, yeah, yeah, of course. And then we worked out, if we did that, on the bed at any one time, our combined age was 212. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an attractive thought, is it, really? <laughs> and then when they were getting down to it, they were whispering things in each other's ears. I said, oh God, I bet they're talking sexy talk. We could do that. I said, yeah, we could, but it would probably be about how little value our pension is. <laughs> and the rise in energy costs. <laughs> And then finally they were rubbing each other. She said, oh my God, look at that. We could do that as well. I said, yeah, we could, but it would just be to fucking relieve cramp, wouldn't it? <laughs> she said, there's no surprises either anymore. Fair point. So the other night she was in the bathroom getting ready for bed. I went to, went to the bedroom, turned the lights off, lit some candles hid under the bed. <laughs> and when she came in, I just grabbed her ankles. <laughs> Apparently that wasn't the surprise for the mother. <laughs> but she did surprise me just before Christmas because she said, um, you have remembered you're picking me up from my work stool tomorrow. It did come as a surprise because she's self-employed and works from home. I said, no, that's fine. Um, so I, I picked her up at the allocated time. She got in the car. All I said was, had a nice time? Are you saying I'm drunk? Oh, don't fucking start. <laughs> no, but clearly you've had a drink, haven't you? <clears throat> Silence for about five minutes. And then they got that famous line, I don't think you love me. Oh. <laughs> In fact, I, I don't think you ever love me. I said, well, I do, I have. Can't guarantee anything going forward. Um, <laughs> If you love me, you can prove it right now. I said, well, how am I going to do that? She said, you can get on top of me, in this car, and make love to me. I said, that's not going to happen, is it? She said, give me one good reason why not. I said, I'll give you three. I said, well, then. Well, number one, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> number two, we're still outside Weatherspoons in the middle of Gloucester. <laughs> And number three, we've got your girlfriend Chris in the back of the car. Because <laughs> we're giving her a lift down, right? And that's the thing. This was the same girlfriend she went away on that cruise for for a week. I didn't have any problems with that. No problems at all. I wanted one night away with my girlfriend. Fuck you, no. <laughs> the grief I got with that. I'll just leave you with something now. I, um, as I've got older, I thought I was calming down, like with ginger hair and everything else and age. Age mellows you, it fucking doesn't, it really doesn't. And um, we had a new kitchen from Moven. And on the last day of them fitting it, they scratched one of the light oak wooden doors. And I said to the fitter, what are you gonna do about that? Don't worry, um, I'll order a new one. It'll be here tomorrow, we can fit it. Six weeks we were waiting for this door. Six weeks, phoning, phoning, promising, nothing. We were just going out Saturday, knock on the door, postman there, door-shaped parcel, 
John signed for it? Yeah. I brought it in. Then he said, you can open it. Well, no, clearly, clearly it's the door. I don't need to open it. So why don't you open it? Clear, look, it's the bloody door. Let's just go. Open it. Okay. Opened it, looked inside, and the door was blue. I got on the phone straight away to Mobile Customer Services. This is Mr. Hill from Gloucester. Oh, hello. My door's arrived. Oh, well, that's good, because you've been waiting ages, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> well, you didn't have to ring us to tell us that. I said, well, the thing is, the door's blue. And she sniggered down the phone. <laughs> I said, are you laughing? She said, well, I've got to see the funny side, haven't you? I said, no, not really. She said, is this call going to take long? Because it's 5 to 12 and I finish at 12. I said, no, 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 not today you don't. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to get off your ass. You're going to go down to the warehouse. You're going to find me a lighter wooden door. You're going to get in your car. You're going to drive to Gloucester. You're going to knock on my door. I'll open it. You're going to come in. I'll make you a coffee. You can fit the fucking door. All right. And then you're going to disappear. And I never want to see you or hear from your fucking company ever again. I said, there's no need for that. I said, there's every fucking need for this. She said, I need to ask you a question. I said, what is it? Did you say the door's blue? Yes! The fucking door is blue. You have peeled back the blue detective cover. <laughs> Listen, you've been um, a delight. Thank you very so much for it. Good night.